By the end of this video, you'll be able to completely understand the 3D camera and apply that knowledge to make high level edits. So we're learning how to use the 3D camera. It's simple and broken down, so let's just get straight into this. Let's create a new composition and just write camera practice. Let's press OK and let's come to this left corner and go to new and then camera. As you can see, there's a lot of settings here, but let's break it down. So we have the type of camera. The one node camera is the most simple one. It moves like a handheld camera. This is the most simple one to understand. The two node camera moves around a point. So there's going to be a point of interest and the camera is almost like on a leash. It will move around that point of interest as opposed to the one node camera, which is going to move just like a normal handheld camera. There's no point of interest. It's not attached to anything. It's just going to move like a handheld camera. Today, we're going to use the two node camera. So select that. The preset, this seems confusing. I like to just keep it at 50 millimeters. This isn't exactly important as you can change all of these values. So what is this going to do? Well, this is going to select a preset. For the film size and everything you see here the main thing is the focal length and focus distance now when we turn on depth of field this is going to allow a camera blur the camera blur can be changed when we're in the actual edit so this isn't too important but it's good to understand what these values mean these values are going to determine how far away the camera has to be for something to be in focus and something to be out of focus the aperture basically determines how much blur there is so you know how you have a Gaussian blur and the value starts from zero and it goes up. This is the same thing. How much blur is there? These you don't exactly have to worry about. Now this all looks overwhelming and confusing, but we don't need to worry. Set the preset to 50 millimeters and everything will look just normal. Everything will be fine. You don't have to change these or worry about anything. These are just simple settings that honestly won't matter. So now we know that, let's press OK. Now I'm going to set the view from active camera to custom view one. And this is going to allow us to be able to understand what the camera does. We can see the camera and we can see what would be in view if we had something there. As this is a two node camera, we have a point of interest and this is what the camera is going to operate around. This is the leash, which I spoke about. Now, because we have this two node camera, this camera is going to interact differently with these values as opposed to a one node camera. So here you can see the point of interest. We can move this and it will interact with the camera. So we can move this point of interest downwards and that means that the camera will angle itself downwards. Then we have the position. This is going to move the actual position of the camera. So as you can see, the camera is physically moving down. Also right, left, forwards, backwards. This value also represents the zoom. However, they aren't connected. So when you move this, the zoom will not change as you can see there these two work hand in hand if i move the position of the camera the point of interest will not move and vice versa if i move the point of interest the camera in space will not move when we move both of these say we move this downwards and we move the camera downwards we move the whole thing downwards and this leads on to why people say link it to an object see with a normal camera with only one node you don't have this problem where you have to move both of these values at the same time you can see if i press p here and i position the camera downwards the whole thing moves as opposed to this where i'd have to move both the point of interest and the position of the camera to regain a normal viewing angle at a lower position when you're working with 2d layers this is going to be important because if you're only using the camera just to move around the composition without having to animate every layer, being able to move the camera left and right and up and down will enable you to navigate that much easier than having to animate both the point of interest and the position. So this is why we link it to a null object. As you can see here with a null object, if we parent link this and we go to the position, when we move the position, the whole camera will move as well. That's why people tell you to link it to a null object. Now, any keyframe you make on this null object will also apply to the camera. And we can also set more keyframes for the, say, the point of interest, and they will work simultaneously. So now we've gone through that, let's go through the camera options. What are these? This is the zoom. Now this is standard. This means that there's pretty much no zoom. Imagine you have a handheld camera. If you have no zoom, there's no zoom. This is the no zoom. If we increase this, the zoom's going to increase. If we decrease this, the zoom will decrease. This is literally a value. Imagine you have a handheld camera. This is the value 
for that zoom button you press. This will change the zoom, but the camera is not moving in 3D space. Depth of field, we already know if we have this turned on, there will be a blur depending on what's in focus. The things in focus will be within this because the focus distance is here. If we move this, we can see the focus distance changing. The focus distance is moving backwards. Therefore, what's in focus is within this box at the back. What's out of focus is in front of it. So this will apply when we start to move things in 3D space. So originally we might be working with a 2D composition, but what if we turn them layers 3D and we move the focus distance back? Well, if we also move an object forward and we have another object in the back, you will see the blur. There will be a blur in this object in the front. Vice versa, if you decrease this value, comes closer to the camera, you'll see the objects in the back will become blurred and the objects in the front will become clear. The aperture value is how much blur will be applied to the things not in focus. So if you increase this, there will be more blur for the things not in focus. A value roughly around this usually looks good enough. But remember, you can change it to however you want. It depends on the edit. It depends on if you're using other blurs or not. It all just depends. And then you have these, which I think is worth you just experimenting with. It's not something you'd usually use in an edit, but I think it's definitely very key and you could play around with it and probably find something really interesting but we understand the main principles of how this camera works so now we can move on to how to actually use it in edit so now we understand how to actually use the 3d camera let's go through how we can apply that to make some good edits this is what we're starting off with we can make this good just using the 3d camera so let's get straight into it let's come to this bottom left corner let's right click go to new and create a camera we're going to use a two node here with the preset of 50 millimeters. I'm gonna press OK. Bring this to the bottom. Grab all these layers and make it 3D. So we need to create some depth within this composition because right now it looks like a flat piece of paper and there's no depth. Let's come to this view here. As you can see, we've got our camera all the way over here and we've got our layers from the side. This view helps because when we open these, and we start to manipulate these values we can see it coming forward so we want to bring this text layer which i have here forward so we're just gonna increase this value as you can see the text comes forward this is the text layer in the composition it's actually just looks like this this is the change we've made but here we can just see what we've actually done in 3d space so we're just gonna do the same here for this middle image right there we're going to come back to the right we're going to open the transform and go to anchor point and increase this value so it's in the middle between the text and the background so we've created a little bit of depth now we can come into the camera and open the transform come right to the beginning and we're going to keyframe the position i'm going to skip to one second and we're just going to increase this zoom roughly like that and keyframe the z rotation we're just going to change this to about minus three so we're going to come back to the zero seconds and just reset this so this is what we've created so far now this doesn't look like anything crazy but when we start to layer these effects it'll start to look good so let's just grab all of these keyframes and just easy ease them and we can already see an immediate difference so as you can see, all we've done with the 3D camera is we made a zoom on all of the layers. So we're going to come to one second and we're going to create a keyframe for the point of interest. And we're going to come to about here and we're just going to move this to the left. So the point of interest just move into the left. Then we're going to keyframe the position and we're going to slightly just move this to the right or to the left, sorry, and zoom in just a little bit more. So you can see this is what we've made. I'm just going to adjust this point of interest so it's more to the left. So I want this text to be in the middle of the screen roughly. So I might increase this zoom a little bit more. Come to the left a little bit more. So as you can see we have this. Now this will start to look better as we layer. So let's grab these keyframes and just easy ease them like this. 
and I'm going to move this keyframe slightly backwards. So now what we want to do is we want to press this position here. We want to come to the graph and a real life camera is not going to go all the way up. This means the camera is moving at its fastest and the camera is not going to stop moving. There'll never be a point where the camera is still when you're making movements like this. So what we want to do is we want to make it so the camera doesn't stop during this movement. So how do we do this? Well, this bottom line here is no movement. This means the camera has zero movement. We can just simply fix this by moving the keyframes up. So the camera doesn't reach this bottom line. The camera doesn't stop moving. As you can see, this makes it look so much better. Just this simple change makes it look so much better. And we can also change these keyframes as well. So we can make the camera actually speed up during these parts. And it just adds that little bit more depth to your edits. So here also, we're just going to change this. This is the easy ease. This is what easy ease does. It just creates a graph like this. We're just going to move this slightly to the left. So there's a little bit of a steeper ramp here and then it's going to curve off. So as you can see, this is what we've created. So we're starting to create a bit of depth now. We started off with three images that didn't move and now we're starting to get a little bit of depth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back to this. And I'm just going to increase the zoom a little bit more. Yeah, I like the way that that looks. And we're just going to make sure that these are all lined up. Make sure that the velocity doesn't skip upwards like this. We want to make sure that it's all lined up. So this is what we got so far. And remember, you can keep adjusting the values as we go along. You don't have to, you know, stick to one value once you get it. So I'm quite happy with this. It looks pretty smooth and now we're going to see why creating this depth is going to be important. So let's come into the active camera and this is where we're going to start to mess around with the depth of field. So make sure you have this turned on. I'm going to increase the aperture to about 800 pixels because we're working with layers that are quite close together. We need to make sure that the blur will be high. Otherwise, you know, the blur won't be too obvious. Now, the focus distance is what determines what will be in focus. Right now, the focus distance is over here. This is where the focus distance is. And you can see when I move this, you can see this line represents the focus distance. When it moves, we can see what will be in focus and what will not be. Here, this red line over here is the words. This red line over there was the words and if we come into the active camera this is now in focus and everything in the back isn't but right now we don't want the words to be in focus so let's come back to one second and let's move this focus distance until this image becomes in focus and we can come back to this view here and we can see is it in focus well this line is slightly off so let's just move this Come back in and there we go. We got that in focus. Perfect. Now let's keyframe this. And let's go to the beginning and just reset. So here we have the background image in focus. And it's going to change to that image there. Now as the text comes in, we want to change the focus distance so that the text is in focus and the background isn't. So we'll come back to our view that we had here, the right. If you're getting confused, this line here is the background. And as you can see, we haven't moved it. So this is going to stay here the whole time. So let's bring this focus distance forward all the way till we get to this red line, which is our text. Let's come to the active camera and you can see that this is now in focus. So as we've made a keyframe, you'll be able to see the different images shifting. but we can carry on to layer this and add more depth. So let's see what we can do here. The blur in real cameras is never really too perfect. And we can get the effect of the sort of changing adapting camera within After Effects. So let's just make a keyframe here, right? And let's just move it here. 
So we've created a keyframe where this text will not be in focus. And it creates this slight, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a very slight, quick blur and adjustment. And here, so we can see if I play this again, there's a very slight little blur. And you remember, you don't have to create a keyframe here. It's just the value which I know will have the text not in focus. But you can just literally come to the focus distance and just create a random value. Look, I can just move this backwards and it'll make everything out of focus. And then here, bang, it'll come into focus again. So like that. Now remember, we can keep adjusting our layers. So let's just come back to this. And I want this velocity to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to change it to roughly like this. And let's see how this looks. So all I've done is literally grabbed this position, gone into the graph and just adjusted this velocity a little bit more. And I find that it looks just slightly better. We can carry on messing around with this focus distance. So let's create another little quick blur. Let's just decrease this value slightly. It's going to be like this. And if we keep adding these slight little blur imperfections, it starts to give the impression that it's a real camera. So I'm going to come after this keyframe where the text is in focus and I'm just going to move it slightly forward. So everything becomes out of focus. And then I'm just going to copy this keyframe where the, the text is in focus. I'm just going to copy and paste. So you can see we get that slight little quick blur effect. We need to make it so the camera comes back into position so that this image is just looks normal. So how do we do that? Well, all we have to do is just grab all of these keyframes we made at the start and copy and paste them roughly about here. We've got a selected camera, just copy and paste. And don't forget to get this point of interest and just do the same. And you got it back in the middle and it looks all back to normal. And remember, this focus distance is going to change. So it's going to look slightly out of focus. So we'll find the keyframe that's in focus. Place it roughly about here. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you. So come over to this box in the bottom left. Let's create a new null object. And let's link this together. Let's just go to transform, position, hold alt on the keyboard and left click. We're going to create the expression wiggle three comma two. Now this is going to make a sort of handheld look, and it's just going to finish off your edit. You may have to come into the camera and just add a little bit of a zoom at the beginning keyframe. And if this is too much, we can always just come back in here and change it. So maybe we could change this value to one. And yeah, once you get something you're happy with, I mean, you can always build on this. I mean, this is a very simple edit. I just made this so, you know, everyone can do it. You just get three images, two images, put them together. You layer them in 3D space and you create a nice edit. So, um, yeah.